We talked about classifying carbohydrates as monosaccharides, disaccharides, etc. Um, now we're going to look within the monosaccharide classification, we can classify um, those monosaccharides in a couple of different ways too. Um, although we could draw structures for a lot of monosaccharides, it, it happens that only the monosaccharides with three to six carbons commonly occur in nature. And so since we're studying the chemistry of biological organisms, we're only going to talk about the ones that actually are found there. So we can classify monosaccharides based on the number of carbon atoms. And um, sugars, saccharides, typically have names that end in os, like glucose and lactose and fructose. So we can classify these in groups. Um, a triose has three carbon atoms, tetrose has four, pentose is five, hexose is six. Here we're using those same numerical Greek prefixes. We can also classify monosaccharides by their functional groups, whether it's an aldehyde or a ketone. So aldose is a monosaccharide that has an aldehyde group and a ketose has the ketone group. And sometimes we'll combine those two classifications together. So if we're talking about an aldohexose, aldo means it's an aldehyde, hexose means it's a six carbons. So it's a monosaccharide with an aldehyde group and six carbon atoms. And when we talk about sugars, um, that is a general description for monosaccharides or disaccharides, and we'll talk about disaccharides soon. So just like a salt was any or, um, ionic compound, um, sugar is a mono or disaccharide. So classify each of the following monosaccharides according to both the number of carbon atoms and the type of carbonyl group present. So how many carbons are in saccharide A? One, two, three, four, five. So that would make, based on number, it would be what? Pentose. Is it an aldehyde or a ketone? Aldehyde. It's at the end, the CHO, aldehyde. So this is an aldose. Okay, what about B? How many carbons? Six, so that makes it a hexose. Is it an aldose or a ketose? It's a ketose because that carbonyl group is not at the end, it's on the second carbon. How about C? Six again, hexose. Aldehyde or ketone? Aldehyde, so this is an aldose. And D. Five carbons, so pentose, aldehyde, or ketone? Ketone. ketone. Ketose. So, there are trioses, tetroses, pentoses, and hexoses. And every time you add another carbon, it's chiral, and so then you double the number of isomers. So what we're looking at here is only the D enantiomers. For each of these listed here, there's also an L enantiomer. That's a lot of different sugar molecules. So glyceraldehyde, there's a D and an L because it has one chiral center. Here, this one has two chiral centers. Erythros has the hydroxyl group on the first carbon center on the right, and threos has that on the left. The D version of erythros has the hydroxyl group on the right, and you'll see 
The bottom chiral center on all of these is on the right. That's the D enantiomer. The D in the L only applies to that bottom one, the highest numbered chiral center. The rest of this has to do with what the chirality is at the others. So here we've got two chiral carbons besides the one at the bottom. And so this top one could be right or left. And the bottom one could be right or left. So here they're both right, here they're both left, and then right and left. You get the idea? Just, yeah, lots and lots. So you can be thankful that this is Chem 3B and not Chem... I don't know if they do this in 28 or 29. But um, in the full-blown organic chemistry class, they make you memorize all these. And you, they, they have some tricks for it. There's, there, there are tricks, but you have to be able to write this whole table out of your head. So we're not going to do that. But I want you to appreciate the subtle differences between all these guys. These hexoses all have the same formula. They would all have the same IUPAC name. The only thing that's different is the chirality at each of these four carbons. And so what we do is we give each combination of chirality a special name except for the bottom one. And the bottom one, we've got D and then we have the L. So this is allose and altrose, glucose, mannose, gulose, idose, galactose, and talose. Lysos, xylose, os, 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 right? Thankfully, only some of these are important to biochemistry. These are the ketoses. The ketoses, there are not as many of the enantiomers because that's the smallest one, the triose, is dihydroxyacetone. It does not have a chiral center. So the tetrose is the first one with a chiral center. And so then the pentoses, there's only two different ones here. They each have an L version. And the hexoses, there's just not as many of them.